Good everyone, and welcome to this video, and today, welcome to number three of Joe's Brief History Chats. This appears to be quite a popular series for some people. And to be honest, I quite like doing them, because obviously at the end of the day, you learn something, and I learn something when I'm gathering notes. And today was requested by Raptor Jesus and a couple of others for the M24 Chaffee. Now I'm thinking of doing this in two parts. Number one is obviously describing how the tank was made, um, how many were built, its combat service, etc. which we're going to be doing today. And then a part two, potentially discussing its export. As you can tell, I used the Chinese M24 just to make it easier on me, because obviously I uh, most of the time for Allied teams, and that was very nice. So obviously, we're going to be getting into the usual and everything, but um, like I say, if you've got any, um, if you've got any ones that you want to see, I've already got a couple of plans, potentially, specifically for these two stewards. Now I know what you're thinking, why would I do videos on these two stewards? Well it's not that, it's the first armoured division side of things, obviously old iron sides. This is based, well this stewards based off the first armoured division, or one of the ones that was using the first armoured division. And to be honest, I would love to do something on this, and then I could potentially do one on the US Marine Corps as a whole, and how they use stewards in, like, Japanese combat environments until obviously they had Shermans doing that job. Let me know if you want to see that. But anyway, shall we jump in? Because, well, we've got a lot to get through. Now, there is a part where obviously um, I jump into a Key 61, the Chinese Key 61, which has a talisman on it, which obviously you'd get a video on. But anyway, let's get into it. So, starting out from the beginning. British combat experience in North African campaign identified several shortcomings of the M3 Stuart light tank, especially the performance of its 37mm cannon. A 75mm cannon was experimentally fitted to a howitzer motor carriage M8. You may know this as the M8A1. This is essentially, well, the M8 Scott is essentially a, essentially the M3 Stuart with a larger turret. Trials indicated that a 75mm gun on the M5 light tank development of the M3 was possible. But the M3 slash M5 design was dated, according to what I found anyway. They deemed it dated. Personally, you could probably use it as like an ammo carrier or something. And a 75mm gun reduced storage space, which it does in this tank. The T7 light tank design, which was initially seen as a replacement, grew in weight to more than 25 short tons, taking it out of the light tank classification, and so was designated as the medium tank M7. The weight increase of our un or increased power gave it unsatisfactory performance. The program was stopped in March 1943 to allow standardization on a single medium tank, aka the Sherman. They deemed it not necessary to produce a second medium tank when they already had the Sherman. This prompted the Ordnance Committee to issue a specification for a new light tank, the same powertrain as the M5A1, but armed with a 75mm. This is where we get into the development of the Chaffee. So in April 1943, the Ordnance Corps, together with Cadillac, who manufactured the M5, started work on a new project, designated Light Tank T24. The power plant and transmission of the M5 were used together with some aspects of the T7 medium, and efforts were made to keep the wig, or the weight, sorry, of the vehicle under 20 tons. The armor was extremely light and was sloped to maximize effectiveness. The turret was 25mm thick with a 38mm th thick gun mantlet. There's actually a pretty interesting story that I'm going to mention um, towards the end about the gun mantlet, funny enough. The glacis plate was 25mm thick, side hub or hull armour thickness varied. The frontal section was 25mm thick, but the rear third of the armour, which covered the engine compartment, was only 19mm thick. Obviously as you get towards the the rear side section, you can see that the tank, and I realised that markers went on, I'll, I'll put markers on for you. Um, Obviously, as you get towards the back, it only goes to half an inch, so, yeah, not great. But obviously, this was a light tank. So, a new lightweight 75mm gun was developed, a derivative of the gun used in the B-25H Mitchell bomber. This may be familiar to you PBJ-1H pilots. 
The gun had the same ballistics as the 75mm M3 in use by American techs, such as the Sherman, but used a thinly walled barrel and a different recoil mechanism. The design featured 16 inch 41cm tracks and torsion bar suspension, similar to the early M18 Hellcat tank destroyer, which in itself started in production in July 1943. The torsion bar system was meant to give a smoother ride than the vertical volute suspension, or however you say that, on or used on most other US armored vehicles. At the same time, the, the chassis was expected to be a standard used for other vehicles such as self-propelled guns and specialist vehicles known together as the light combat team. It had a relatively low silhouette and a three-man turret. Now to add on to the self-propelled guns and specialist vehicles part, that would be something like the M19 which is based off the M24 Chaffee. So, on October 15th, 1943, the first pilot vehicle was delivered. The design was judged a success and the contract for or contract for 1,000 vehicles was immediately raised by the Ordnance Department. This was subsequently increased to 5,000 vehicles. Production began in 1944 under the designation Light Tank M24. It was produced at two sites from April at Cadillac and from July at Massey Harris, I think that's how you say that? And by the time its production was stopped in August 1945, 4,731 M24 Chaffees had been produced. A tad under the 5,000, but to be honest, after the war's end, the M24 wasn't really needed. So, combat history, this is where it starts to get a little fun. The M24 started to enter widespread use in December 1944, so it was quite late to the party, shall we say. But they were slow in reaching the frontline combat units. By the end of the war, the light tank companies were mainly still equipped the M3 and M5 Stuart, which was doing the job, but to not the extent that you would want. Some armored divisions did not receive their first M24 Chaffees until the war was over. And, well, that doesn't help, does it, if you needed new light tanks, but we'll gloss over that. So, obviously, aside from the US Army, the British Army was a main user of the M24 Chaffee, with at least several hundred obtained through the US Lend Lease program. I'm not sure if any was sent to the Russians, I don't believe there was. Obviously, once we go over the um, the export side, if you want to see that, obviously, just let me know. Um, that is when, obviously, you'll tell me if you want to see that, and I will do some more research. Side note, there is a part of the Discord server which only me and Derp Angel have access to, and that is to keep my notes in there, and then obviously I can put them on my phone, and then I can use them from there. So, Continuing on. These mainly saw action in northwestern Europe and a northern German plain where British forces saw action against German troops. Reports from the armor divisions that received them prior to the end of the hostilities was generally positive. Crews liked the improved offer of performance and reliability, but they were most appreciative of the 75mm main gun. And well, I am as well. Let's just say that. That's why I love the Chaffee. Which was a vast improvement over the 37mm. Not too much in terms of penetration power, but just raw power of penetration and high explosive capability. The M24 was still inferior to German tanks, especially the later ones such as the Tiger and the Panther, but at least the bigger gun gave the crews a much better chance to fight back when it was needed, especially in infantry support, where the better high explosive capacity would enable that. Now, obviously, the M24's light armor made it vulnerable to virtually all German tanks. Even some anti-aircraft guns, like the light anti-aircraft guns, would have a word. And obviously, anti-tank weapons, anti-tank guns, and also stuff like anti-tank grenades and stuff like that, were all, shall we say, very big threats to the M24. The contribution of the M24 to winning the war in Europe was quite insignificant as too few arrived too late to replace the worn out M5s of the armored divisions. At the end of World War II, the US Army displayed its chaffees alongside British Comet tanks and then later Soviet tanks, the IS-3 for example, in the Berlin Victory Parade in 1945. 
When the US began its occupation of Japan that same year, it deployed a large number of light chaffees instead of bigger Shermans and heavier Pershings due to the narrow roads and small weight loads of bridges in the country. And this is where we get into the post-war combat service of the M24 Chaffee. And this is where I'm going to mention a brief factor that I once heard about. I can't remember the guy's name, but before I continue with the history about what actually happened in the Korean War with this vehicle, I'm going to mention the brief part about the guy. So from what I've been able to find, the guy was a M24 Chaffee gunner, and he fired up a... I think it was a, was it a, it was a Korean War T-34, well a Korean T-34, and he fired several shots, bounced off the armor, and well, the T-34 fired back the M-24, and in most situations, the M-24 would have been blown to smithereens, but it hit the shield of the 75mm and did absolutely nothing to the tank, and he was able to reverse out. If you want to confirm that, I think it's on... What, what show is it? Is it Greatest Tank Battles or something? It, it should be on YouTube. But anyway. During the opening stages of the Korean War, M24s for the initial US tanks directed to combat heavier and larger North Korean t 3045s supplied by the Soviets. The occupation troops in Japan, from which the Chaffee tanks were drawn, were inexperienced and under-equipped due to rapid demobilization after World War II. One other reason for sending Chaffees to Korea initially was also partly because US officers did not regard Korea as a country where large scale tank warfare could occur. Much of the Korean peninsula is largely mountainous and hilly. Can't say I know, I've never been. And therefore sending lighter armored vehicles to combat the North Korean forces made sense. The M24s fared very poorly against the invading army's better armed, better armoured, and better crewed T3045s, as in most situations the Chaffees couldn't scratch them. Not only that, the superior anti tank armaments of infantry and overwhelming air support were. they weren't exactly. they weren't exactly the greatest when it came to. Well, the Chaffee protecting against them. But obviously, as heavier tanks, such as the Pershing and the Sherman arrived, this is where it started to get more better. So, as we continue on, the eventual anti-tank armament soon finished off the Chaffee's reign of terror, and it was soon put as reconnaissance and was replaced in combat by the M4 Sherman, M26 Pershing, M46 Patton, and British Churchill, Comet, and Centurion tanks. And that ended pretty much how I'd expect, so we was on time, so that's always nice. I'm going to let the battle flow for the rest, because there's a bit where I jump into Key 61. But um, this is where I'm going to mention part two possible. Obviously, I haven't got the notes for me right now, but um, if you want me to, I can always go over the the export of the M24 Chaffee, such as the Japanese one, the Chinese one, even though it's technically a Taiwan tank. But even so, if you would want to see that, please do let me know, and I'll be more than happy to do more of these Joe's Brief History Chats. Like I say, I've already got plans for maybe the first armor division, maybe the US Marine Corps using Stuarts, because obviously I've got videos on the M2A4 and the M3A1 Stuart already, so it makes perfect sense for me to do that. Because obviously, I don't really want to do two videos on the same vehicle. That just wouldn't make sense. But even so, it's, it's down to you a lot. Tell me what you think and everything. So, just... That, that's why I started this series. I just want people to, obviously, get... Get into, like, learning about history. In fact, if I, I prefer to do spoken history, which is why you won't see any images. But spoken history is just how I've always wanted to do it. But well, as you saw this game, like everything that I've described about the Chaffee is pretty solid. Obviously the armor protection was complete crap, but the gun was certainly an improvement. But even so, if you do want to see any more of the... Well, obviously if you do want to see a part two of the Chaffee, please do let me know. That C200 burns out for anyone that's interested and I get to drop my bombs, I believe on a chi he
I remember rightly. But I'm going to leave it here. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the M24 Chaffee for Joe's Brief History Chats. Like I say, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next for this one, so feel free to put any in the comments below if you wish to see any. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the M24 Chaffee and obviously a brief appearance by the Chinese Key 61. And I will see you all on the next one.